So I'm Mitchell, founder of Photo Enterprise, and today I'm with uh, Cleveland Aaron, um, who is a freelance photographer for the last 19 years and a photography tutor. You have an ability to create moods through unorthodox lighting methods. Can you talk us through that? Um, yeah, I, I think when I look at a when I look at a, a scene, when I see something, or when I'm moved by something, uh, I kind of work a lot, I suppose, with like uh, my emotions, so I, I try to kind of find a light that um, that mirrors how I feel about the subject. And sometimes you can't always do that with, you know, standard, you know, industry standard equipment like you know a softbox or a brolly or whatever. Uh, so my thing is always trying to recreate the light that that gave me that feeling in the first place. And that's pretty much how I kind of work if I'm working, you know, light in that way. Um, as I said, it's really, it's really quite bizarre. I, I feel kind of that strong that if I see a subject, then the best that I can do is to try and capture it as best as I can, um, because I'm not going to be wasting much time in front of a computer. It's not, not, not really my thing. Uh, but yeah, I just, I love the, I love the challenge of just working with light in different, different conditions. Um, I suppose I particularly excel in working with um, low lighting conditions. Um, probably because it, yeah, it is more subtle, and I, I think it's an easiest way to, uh, to kind of trans transfer kind of an emotion or a feeling, so that uh, you know the viewer kind of gets a concept of, uh, of you know what I, what I felt or what what the subject is feeling or just what the subject is saying. Um, I just feel like give me like photography is really it's, it's it doesn't matter how far we go in technology, it's always going to be about light and communication. And uh, it's, it's how you use that light that will dictate what you actually say or what the image says. And I just try never to use light that contradicts my subject. Fantastic, yeah. Well, I've seen some of your images uh, earlier today in your talk and uh, they do look really good. Um, so your competitions are often subtle yet uh, thought-provoking. Can you tell us how you develop your ideas? Um, ideas? I don't know if I, I don't know if I have ideas that, that have impulses. That's probably a better way to. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I, it's really it's really bizarre because I, I don't think too long as I'm standing here and I can possibly look round and I, I don't know. I just see things that happen. I, I kind of see shapes. It's why um, it's why my talk uh, on uh, was about light, shapes, and, and space because I, I think I spend most of my time just um, just seeing that really. Uh, and that's where the inspiration comes from, to be quite honest. Um, initially, it really depends what I'm shooting, obviously, but I think you have to have a curiosity about your subject. And I, I, it doesn't matter what it is that I'm photographing. I, I have a sometimes an over-healthy curiosity. I mean, I, I'm just always wanting to know more. That's why I would never settle for one perspective. I, I just have this, this yearning to know more about the subject that's in front of me. I think the more that I know, it's the more ammunition I've got, if you like. Um, it's just an easier way to be able to portray them and you know that little bit more about them. Um, and sometimes, you know, there's times I've, I've worked with celebrities where, you know, people look at the photos and say, oh, that's a great photo. God, that must have been really cool. What was he like? And I said, well, you know what? I didn't really know. I had like 10 minutes. And they're like, how did you get that in 10 minutes? But it's, um, it's a really weird thing. I just like to, um, whatever look at, I, I, I kind of, I take in consideration my subject. As I'm doing that, I'm framing at the same time. So I'm kind of looking around. If they're, if they're in the studio, it's normally quite easy. Then I use, this, um, I suppose I use light and shadows to be able to sculpt and, and to give me something that a little bit more diverse. Uh, if I'm out in the streets, then it's a lot different. It's, that's where the real challenge is for me because you've, not only have you got like lighting conditions that you've got no control over, uh, but you've also got shapes and, and colors which which you can either use or can really make the, you know, the image look awful. Uh, so for me, it's, it, it is. It's that, it's that challenge of, to be able to find, you know, finding that right balance between the light 
and the shape and fitting it within my space. The, the space is just basically the, uh, uh, you know, the frame in my viewfinder. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's really interesting. Um, is there a photo you've taken that has special meaning for you? <laughs> Every photo I take has got a special meaning. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I don't think, yeah. It, it's been, you know, uh, I've, got a, I've got a son that's going to be five soon. Uh, I don't know how many pictures I've taken of him, how many gigs. Uh, I, I really couldn't say. It's not, it's not the thing because I, I, I don't take pictures maybe that way. I'm, I'm emotionally attached to everything I've taken. So it's, it's a, to be able to say which one's special, it's, I think it's just special to be able to, to realise a vision sometimes. To be able to just see something. It doesn't matter how, how spectacular it was or, or how, so I don't know, maybe mediocre or meaningless. Because for me, nothing's meaningless. Everything has a meaning. Um, and if I've elected to take a picture of something, it's because of the fact that, yes, I, I'm emotionally attached to that, especially if I'm just out and about. Stiffer when you you know when you're working you know commission and you've got specifications, but even then I, I'm, I'm attached to it. I have to be because I'm kind of, as, you know, as I mentioned kind of earlier, um, you you have to have a healthy sense of curiosity about your subject. Um, it helps you to be able to find out that little bit more and to be able to look at them with you know different perspectives. You know, I'm, you know, I'm never gonna you know, step up and just think right that's a that's a famous person. I know them. Everybody knows them. Just take the picture from here. I, I'm probably gonna be the kind of person that's going to try and get that shot that maybe nobody else has seen but, you know and that, that's not because of the fact that nobody else has tried but it's normally because of the fact that that particular celebrity they've got their favorite looks you know and sometimes it's hard to get them out of their comfort zone so I don't know I don't I, I couldn't really say that I don't have a favorite anything okay <laughs> thank you and uh, how, how did you get into photography what was your big break Big break. That's really bizarre. I've been taking pictures a long time. I haven't always been a photographer because I spent spent quite a bit of time in, in the city working as an aviation broker. But um, the switch, I'm not really quite sure if it was a big break. I, I started working with um, music magazines and uh, and fashion magazines, and that was purely just uh, through uh, friends that I had. There are musicians or they're in the fashion industry in some description of a designers um, or hairstylists, makeup artists. And I, I'd always ask to kind of tag along and do stuff. And I, I kind of, over the time, through the people I knew, I built up a nice, um, a nice collection, a nice portfolio of work. Um, I was always shooting music stuff because some good friends of mine, they used to run a, 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 a night in, um, in the Scala in King's Cross. Uh, so I was always down there taking you know, pictures, um, and I just, I just remember one day they were like, listen, you're, you're always down here, like, what, do you, what do you take pictures of? And I, and I said, oh, well, I'll show you. So, you know, the next, the next session that I had, because they used to do this, it was a fortnightly event, and um, yeah, the next session they did, I just came down for a stack of photos, it was, we're talking prints, uh, and they were like, well, hold a second, so what do you do with these? I said, well, I just take pictures. So they hooked him up with some people, you know, a couple of magazines, and they showed the stuff because they were being interviewed, and it just went from there. So I suppose the magazine stuff is what, magazine work is kind of what maybe kind of got me out there. Um, which it's, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the industry is really changed in that respect because there's very few, you know, uh, obviously um, uh, magazines or periodicals that are, that are in print these days. A lot of stuff's online. Um, but I suppose having, having the head start, it was through that, doing a, a, a lot of that stuff, the music stuff and maybe some extreme um, extreme sports and that kind of thing that I kind of got noticed by Olympus. They had an agency that was looking to find, they were looking to find photographers that they could, uh, I don't know if you like, call, call it sponsorship really, to be able to use their equipment, um, but also reach a, a completely different audience. And I, I, I was working I suppose a lot, lot of my stuff was probably, you know, kind of like street level. I'm working with, like, you know, youth culture, that type of stuff. Um, and I think that they thought that would have been a good, a good idea to maybe attract, uh, you know, new, new followers from, from grassroots, really. Uh, so I was, I was kind of taken aboard from, from then. But I've got to say, it took me quite a few years for me to be using uh, 
one of the equipments that I, yeah, that I, that I really enjoyed. I was not, I was not into. It. I had to be dragged, uh, kicking and screaming into the whole digital revolution. It wasn't really. I don't know. I just thought it was a bit of a gimmick, to be quite honest. I didn't. I, I like the process of doing stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. peeling back the paper, pulling out the roll, tucking it in, winding it on. Yeah. I just love to, I'm a processed person. I, I, I grind coffee beans in the morning. That's, so I, I think it was, um, yeah, I think it was pretty much that. Uh, but yeah, uh, through there, I, I really can't, really can't say. It's one of those really weird things, because I, I do talks at, uh, I suppose, uh, like universities and, and, and colleges and stuff, and I always get that question. They always say, well, you know, how do you, you know, how do you get your work? To give you an example, uh, I've had three commissions this year that came up, kind of came off one of the other. The first one, however, came off some work I did for somebody who recommended me to them. The last time I did work for this guy was like eight years ago. So somebody that I inspired eight years ago is still turning people back my way. So. It's it's really hard to say. I, I can only I, I mean I do know there's no there's no shortcuts. There's, there's, there, there is no shortcuts. Otherwise, really everybody would be doing it. Um, but I suppose I've been in industry like um, a long time, and and um, I, I suppose I've collaborated with, with with the right people, and maybe met lucky enough to meet the right people. Um, and uh, yeah, so. The, I think kind of doing that kind of gets you in with the agencies. I think working with the agencies, with creative agencies, definitely help because they kind of expose you to to the various brands that they work for. Uh, I've worked for I've worked for a few agencies over the years. Um, I suppose through Shine, Shine PR. I've probably done like most because through Shine, I've I kind of worked with um, you know Bacardi and Vodafone. Yeah. Quite a few, quite a few brands, um, but through my Microsoft Publishing as well, they're another agency that I do work work for, and I've done all sorts of stuff. Worked with yeah, Nike for them. Um, yeah, it's really kind of bizarre. A good, a really good friend of uh, a really good friend of my partner's. Uh, she is a, a well, she's kind of like a, a tech designer for for Nokia. So it's not. I wouldn't say that I'm, I kind of get to work through friends because it's I've known her. I don't know, like seven, seven or eight years. But this is only this is the first time she's been at Nokia since I knew her. But but uh, a few weeks ago was the first time I shot a uh, kind of like mini campaign for them. So you know, you just kind of go from strength to strength. Like everything you do, it's um, yeah, it's a kind of it's a kind of heads up to other people out there in the industry. But I do feel that sometimes that people um, they like to know that you've you've got a bit of a, a pedigree. And I think that. Um, that, yeah, I think that maybe kind of looking back, people can see where I've kind of come from, and they can see the you know the, the people I've kind of worked with, uh, which has probably given me that little little yeah. bit of prestige, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, and as a tutor of photography, what would you recommend to anyone wanting to be a photographer? Wow. Okay. Now this one should be really easy. And I work with lots of I work with lots of yeah, lots of lots of students. Uh, I, I would say the majority of the students I work with they they have a particular style, and one of the things I always try to encourage is that they maintain that style. Photography is a weird thing. It's a bit like a it's a bit like a voice. Uh, you're not going to hear me standing here speaking in a you know voice like Morgan Freeman or something. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just wouldn't make any sense. Um, so it's about it's about staying true to your to your own voice, uh, and as a as a tutor, uh, that's that's all I try to do. I try to to develop the individual's potential. I kind of see what their strong points are, and their strong points are normally the things that they're they're passionate about. And then the only weak side they may have is just is how they transfer that. Everybody has a feeling for something everybody can you know see something they've got you know they say, oh, that, that looks really good there but i suppose that the missing link is to be able to get it from there into the into the you know into your camera uh so i kind of that's the thing i kind of um help develop uh individual potential so 
my thing would be what I always tell the students is to, is to really get to understand the sense of, of themselves really. So I'm not going to really suggest loads of other different photographers for them to look at because I don't really think that helps. I think more time should be spent on you know, self-development, understanding the camera for a start. That's another one. I have lots of people that come to a, you know, come to a class and, that, and I say, OK, guys, uh, we need to switch to spot, you know, spot mode meter in or something. They go, uh, well, where do we find that? And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a camera technician. I'm just a photographer. I, you know, I, I don't wear camera. I know the way basic camera works. But, I, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't get them through, like, a, I don't know, a Nikon or Canon menu. Because I've been shooting Olympus for like, I don't know, like 16, 17 years or something like that. So, so you know your camera, that's it. That's the, that's the first part. Because I think once you've got that, uh, I think once you, you, you're really confident in knowing what you're doing with your camera, then it kind of, it's almost like brain muscle, really. You're not thinking about it. That means you're then dedicating all your time and all your attention and effort um, towards creativity of your own visions. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely great. So, what advice would you give to someone thinking about going freelance? Wow, make sure you've got a job on the side. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's it's really bizarre. But I, um, don't specialise. That's the only thing I could say. It's just don't don't specialise. But photography is bigger than any one genre. And if you think about photography as just being a person who paints imagery with light, then you could probably turn your hands to uh, pretty much anything. Make yourself, uh, I don't know, people call it versatile. I just call it being a photographer. But it, it just means that there's lots of different things you can do. You know, My portfolio will go from shooting products to personalities to architecture, whatever. But I just understand light. And I think that's probably, you know, probably the best thing is, is don't, get fixated on any particular industry just because of the fact that you know you love it because yes you may be able to earn but it's it's more I don't know I think it's, it's more than just earning um, it's about also having a bit of presence I suppose in the industry and so many industries you know they cross over these days you know from the music to the fashion and you just you just never know where the work's going to come from but obviously you're going to have less chances if your head is pretty much buried into one one, one industry. Wide open. Okay. Well, if people want to uh, hear more about you or learn more about you, see your images, uh, have you got a website? I do. It's uh, simply clevelandaron.com um, or there's the uh, f5.6.co.uk and that's F as in the letter, the number five, the word point, uh, number six.co.uk. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.